Welcome to what we believe is one of the most important videos on our channel. This video is quite short so we hope you will watch it to the end. However, if you don't have time, here is our most important message. Ask your doctor to do a A1C blood test. If you want to know why, please stay with us for a few more minutes. It all has to do with nature's rule number 3, respect your blood sugar. So in this video, we will focus on the vital importance of keeping your blood sugar levels no higher than that of your ancestors some 15,000 years back in time. When your ancestors enjoyed their meals their blood sugar would rise only slightly till their brain eventually would tell them they had eaten enough and they were no longer hungry. This is because there isn't much free sugar in nature, so a small rise in blood sugar signaled the end of a pretty large meal. Respecting your blood sugar is imperative if you really want to turn back your biological age and reduce your risks for serious illnesses and dementia, and premature death. Here is why. Having consistently high blood sugar creates serious damage to all the small blood vessels in your body. This dramatically increases the risks of a long range of serious health problems. These risks include damage to your kidneys and to your eyes and to all the nerves throughout your body, as well as heart disease and strokes and it may lead to blindness and amputations. Adding to that, almost half of all deaths attributable to high blood sugar occur before the age of 70 years. People who are diagnosed with pre-diabetes have higher than normal blood sugar levels, though not high enough to be considered type 2 diabetes yet. If you have pre-diabetes, the long-term damage of diabetes may already have started. Without knowing it, your pre-diabetes may already be damaging your heart and your blood vessels and kidneys. You can have pre-diabetes for years but have no clear symptoms, so it can go undetected until serious health problems show up. Around the world, most people with pre-diabetes have absolutely no idea that they have it, they just don't know. This is why asking your doctor to do a A1C test is so important. Let us take one example. In the US there are estimated 90 million people with pre-diabetes. Of these 90 million Americans, 85% do not know that they are in danger. They have no idea, they just don't know and they carry on with their daily life as if everything is fine. This is very scary indeed because people with pre-diabetes have been found to have about a 20% increased chance of heart attack or stroke compared to people with normal blood sugar levels. Add to that, experts now say that a pre-diabetic person's risks for damage to the eyes and damage to the kidney as well as heart disease are nearly as great as those of a person with full-blown diabetes. So now you can understand why pre-diabetes is often characterized as a deadly disease and why everybody should be made aware of the danger of having above normal levels of blood sugar. This leads us to the importance of proper annual health checkups. But not the way it is often performed. Let us look at a typical example. Here we have our healthy looking friend as he calls his doctor to make an appointment for his annual checkup. He thinks he is in great shape and has no worries so the only reason for wanting a health checkup is because his insurance company requires it. Our friend follows the doctor's instructions and doesn't eat anything during the last 12 hours before seeing his doctor. The doctor is happy because everything seems to be normal. Our friend's blood pressure is okay and his heart works fine and he has not put on much weight since last year. Then the normal blood tests were done. The blood samples will be sent to the lab and the doctor promises to call our friend to let him have the results. A few days later, the doctor calls to confirm that everything is fine, though the blood sugar was a bit on the high side, but don't worry, he said. We will see how it is next year. In the case of our friend, that message was flawed, in fact, it was terribly wrong because our friend, in this example, has indeed pre-diabetes. So what did the fasting blood test show and why did it not detect our friend's pre-diabetes? The fasting blood test captured only the blood sugar level at the very moment in time the test was taken after our friend had been fasting for 12 hours. The test did not tell anything about our friend's blood sugar level the night before and certainly not the week before. What the doctor could have done, or rather should have done, was to skip the fasting blood sugar test and go straight to what we call the A1C blood test. An A1C test provides information about your blood sugar levels, not just at the time the test was taken, but it shows your average blood sugar levels over the past three months. If the doctor had made an A1C blood test, 
Our friend in this example would have been told that he in fact has pre-diabetes and must act accordingly to avoid future problems. The message to you is this, you must ask your doctor to do the A1C test. If he hesitates, you just have to insist that he does it. So let us look more closely at the A1C test. The results are reported as a percentage. A higher A1C percentage corresponds to higher average blood sugar levels. The higher your A1C level, the higher your risk of developing diabetes or complications of diabetes. For someone who doesn't have diabetes, a normal A1C level is below 5.7%. If your A1C level is between 5.7 and 6.4%, you have pre-diabetes, which means you have a high risk of developing diabetes in the future. An A1C level of 6.5% or higher on two separate occasions shows that you have diabetes. An A1C level above 8% means that your diabetes is not well controlled and you have a higher risk of developing complications of diabetes. So let us repeat, our very important message to you is that you must ask your doctor to do the A1C test, even though it might not be covered by your insurance. Whatever the cost, it is certainly worth it because it may help you to take action to prevent the disastrous consequences of developing type 2 diabetes. The good news is that progression from pre-diabetes to type 2 diabetes is not inevitable. It is possible. Eating healthy foods and restricting the number of meals you eat every day to a maximum of 3 meals, plus making physical activity part of your daily routine can help bring your blood sugar level back to normal. Perhaps you should watch part 1 and part 2 in this series once more, just to remind yourself about the importance of exercise and eating real food. To learn more about pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes, please watch our video series on diabetes where we will share with you our best recommendations and tell you what you can do to get your blood sugar back to normal, and even how to reverse your type 2 diabetes. We will certainly not tell you to eat refined carbohydrates in moderation, like so many doctors tell their patients. In that series, we will tell you that in our opinion, moderation will kill you, and instead, you should really go nuclear in your war against diabetes. So let us sum up. Worldwide there are an estimated 500 million people living with diabetes plus an unknown but probably much larger number of people living with pre-diabetes. Diabetes is the direct cause of nearly 2 million deaths yearly and an additional 2.5 million deaths caused by high blood sugar levels. That means that worldwide half a billion people have diabetes and near 5 million people die every year from diabetes and high blood sugar levels. Imagine that, near 5 million deaths every year. And as we have seen, an estimated 90 million Americans are pre-diabetic and 85% of them have no idea of the danger they are facing. So please, respect your blood sugar and ask your doctor to do the A1C test at least once a year. We hope you have found this video helpful, and if so, please give it a thumbs up and click subscribe and the bell to get notifications when we upload our weekly videos. Thank you so much for visiting our channel. Good luck to you.